Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Thursday night V Pub. I hope you're all doing very, very well. You're very welcome here. And of course, if you're some of the guys, as so many of you are, guys or girls who's picking this up on the replay, I'm very, very grateful. Welcome. I hope you can join and you can watch the live chat and participate and hang out with the rest of us. So many of you in, 95 of you waiting outside the doors. Am I late tonight? I'm maybe just a minute or so late. I apologise. Um, so nice to see so many of you here. Uh, welcome. Come in, pull up a seat in the lounge and uh, introduce yourself to your fellow barflies. Tell us where you're joining us from tonight and tell us what you're sipping. And I'll tell you what I'm sipping just now. I'm actually sipping uh, one of the, the new Aaron's. This is the 10-year-old Aaron. And it's kind of in keeping with the theme tonight. There's a loose theme to the V-Pub tonight. Um, and I'll cover it a wee bit more in a second. But it's talking about value whiskies. Now, with a specific focus on Scotch whisky, of course, um, there's lots of other value uh, whiskies out there as well, right across the States and Ireland, right across the rest of the world. Uh, maybe not so much Japan. <laughs> Um, but I'm focusing on, of course, on what I'm comfortable with and where I feel like um, I can gauge it. And uh, so it's kind of focusing mostly on scotch. And I think Aaron fits into that value concept. I gave the 14-year-old my whiskey of the year last year because I was loving it so much. And I was loving that it was that good a whiskey at a very decent price level as well. Well, this is a 10-year-old. Um, the 14-year-old is now gone, unfortunately. So if you do happen across a 14-year-old and you enjoy it, pick it up. And um, we're hoping it's coming back again. But if it does, it'll come back in this new packaging, probably. Um, yeah, I quite like this. It's quite nice. It's kind of a more kind of traditional, you know, stencil style font, kind of paper label. There's even some Braille and things on here. I believe these ripples are supposed to mimic the waterfalls on the mountains in Arran. Um, it's quite a nice bottle, not too tall, not too fat, um, and quite unique. So not bad. First couple of pours on this, I wasn't so sure. It was a wee bit oversweet to me. I tend to be quite sensitive to virgin oak or first fill bourbon, and it was a wee bit forward with that. But now I'm certainly enjoying this one tonight. In fact, I'm going to top it off and pour another one before I say hello to you guys, because I want you to hear something. This is strange in that the first pour, there was no glug from this bottle because, because of the, sh the shoulder shape. So when we pour, we don't get the, the glug. So I'm, I'm going to have to kind of simulate it with a or something. Um, yeah, I thought that was quite strange. I don't think it's very expensive, about 35 pounds or something. And Aaron certainly fits into that profile of still decent value whiskies. Now, let me explain what I'm talking about when I talk about decent value. I'm not just talking about cheap. It can't be cheap. Don't buy cheap. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about things that bring good quality whiskey, and it's still affordable. Let's pop over there. Next, it's Buddy. So how are we all? Let's jump in and say hello to some of you guys. Uh, if you want a shout out, just type Barfly and I'll try and catch um, your uh, your comment and I'll give you a little shout out. What I want to do though, I thought it was really funny, is that I, don't, I only set this up at 24 hours notice. I've had a really busy week, just come back from London um, a day and a half ago and I just set this stream up last night and as I was in there tidying things up, I noticed that there were some barflies in already uh, and these guys, I'll just give them a shout out because they've been sitting here for 24 hours potentially. Uh, McAllen Fine and Rare was the first in, he said great topic. Uh, Lee, Lee Woodrow was in and he said, I'm a little early. Yes, Lee, you were. Mark uh, Goins was in, he's saying 24 hours away and five people already waiting. Daniel Vermas was in saying barflies, gonna barfly. Steve A was also here and he's saying that's how us whiskey folk roll. And Whiskey Shared Toby was in saying, ready and waiting. Well done, guys. You were in nice and early. And that's the cool thing about the live streams is that the chat uh, goes live. Um, I mean, it doesn't stay. It's not continuous. But you can jump in at any point in time <laughs> and have a shout and see if anybody's in the VPUB way ahead of everybody else. And you can say hello. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's see. McAllen Fine Rare is in again. He's saying, Aquavite, do it yourself. Colorless Blue Things is here. Good to see you. It's not whiskey until it glugs. 
Um, yeah, I did kind of miss it. I did. I do kind of miss that that neck pour that kind of. I like it. It's part of the ceremony of opening a, a new bottle of whiskey, isn't it? Simon Ray is in. Salipuro both saying Barfly. Graham Young is here. Good to see you, Graham. Gregor is in from France saying Barfly. Lee Woodrow is here saying nice shelves. Is that potentially the first time you've seen them, uh, Lee? I did a wee bit of a, a, a spruce up over the summer. Uh, last drop, Chris is in. Good to see you, Chris. Uh, Malt Review is in asking for Andy. I'm sure Andy is in as well. I think I saw him kicking around a wee bit earlier. Uh, Steve A is here saying, Aquavita, I'm very happy with the Quinta Urbana. It's a value. It's always been good. And they just upped from 12 to 14 years, but kept the price. Yes, I agreed. I commented on that before we shut down for summer, but I thought it was a nice thing. Scotch Test Dummies just did a comparison video. You should catch that where they compare the 12 and the 14 together side by side. Um, and I thought it was it was decent. Um, you know, it would have been quite easy for them just to just to put out the new one and just continue to call it the twelve year old Kinteru band. I think there's there's a statement there by them upping that age by two years and keeping the price the same. And I hope it indicates. I hope it's indicative of the fact that Scotch is maybe catching up a little bit. It should be with all the extra capacity that's been made. Daniel Vermas is in. Good to see you, Daniel. Tabitha Adams is shouting, Barfly. Whiskey Weekend Dram, Barfly. Cresimir Jelchitz is in, Barfly. Skogsmard is saying, hello, Roy. Just poured myself a dram of Talisker 10. Good for you, Skogsmard, which I'll be enjoying during tonight's stream. An excellent bottle for the money, in my opinion. Yes. And unlike a lot of the, the Diageo expressions, it's got a nicer ABV, 45.8% ABV as well. It's a wee bit uh, nicer. I've never bonded with the Talisker 10, but I do love the 18. It's a real treat dram. Mark Slinger is in. Good to see you, Mark. Um, Sid Martin also in. Jimmy Jazz. Uh, saying good evening, Aquaviti, and all the bar flies. Tomato Yoshi is in. Good to see you. Long time no see, my friend. Good to welcome you back again. Uh, Marcus Kreitner is here. Good to see you. Marcus Whiskey Radar. Um, our baggy is here. Mose is in as well. Good to see you, Mose. Uh, Jimmy Jazz. Andy Garbage Muncher. Barfly. Hi there, Buna Having 12. Good shout. Very nice dram. Decent value as well. Fits with the theme. Absolutely. James Bricker, my friend. James has just sent across uh, a virtual dram and he said, Eagle Rare is still the best, the best value bourbon. Well, James, we remember that moment in August last year that we shared that Eagle Rare together. And maybe we'll get a chance to do something similar in October. Thanks, James. Slancha. Paul Gibbs is here. Good to see you, Paul. Barfly. Hi, Roy. And Christian is in. Uh, Christian Dugstadt saying, Barfly. Good to have you, Christian. Wonderful to have so many of you. And 174. Tonight, I will be drawing the heels from the last recycled uh, review. I hope you enjoyed that review. It was really, really challenging. You can hear the audio on it. It's really peeking out and disappearing at quite a lot of points through the video. But I just decided to kind of uh, embrace the messy with that and release it anyway. Um, it seems to have gone down okay. But of course, I've got um, six or so heels. Um, two sets. I've got a set for uh, everyone that I'll draw tonight. And I've also got a set for patrons that will be drawn as well. I'll draw the two uh, sets tonight. And there'll be somebody that picks up a nice little set of samples. Uh, I can't really remember what's in there now. I should have brought them upstairs. I know the Ralphie Rosebank is in there. Um, um, the Green Spot, uh, Chateau Leoville Barton. There's a, there's a few nice whiskies in there. Something nice to look forward to. Um, and uh, I went to do a wee bit of whiskey shopping today as well. Um, there was there was one distillery that I didn't really have anything here um, that I wanted to talk about specifically. Uh, and uh, I went in to pick up a bottle because I felt I should. And I ended up coming away with two completely different things. <laughs> I kind of just changed my mind. Literally, I was as I was walking up to the Good Spirits Company in Glasgow today, and as I walked in, I kind of knew what I was going to be picking up. And then um, there was another bottle that was pointed out to me um, that I'd been looking at a few weeks before, um, a brand new release, and I was kind of suckered into that as well. I just couldn't help myself. So um, I'll, I will uncork uh, one of those a wee bit later. But it's, again, these bottles do, despite these not being particularly good value expressions, they do fit in with the theme of good value whiskey and distilleries. So um, this came from 
this whole theme came from the last VPUB two weeks ago. And uh, I got caught short, or I felt like I got caught short a wee bit. And I don't remember who asked, but somebody just threw out a question asking me to tell them what uh, I felt was a good value producer, a good value whiskey that they could they could chase down. And I stumbled a wee bit, and I, I felt like I was caught a wee bit short, and I felt like I just kind of fobbed them off by telling them about the article that I'd written, that it was still probably quite valid. Um, and I gave them a couple of suggestions, but I realized that I was caught um, short by, I think my direction in whiskey's kind of gone a wee bit more expensive. Um, and I've been looking at more kind of special releases and things of the moment, now whiskies rather than kind of general things that people engage with on a wider scale. Kieran, you star Richard, um, Kieran May, my friend Richard from down south is in, he's saying, hi Roy, Anox 16 CS over your shoulder, I believe. Great topic as ever, yes. Well spotted Richard, that's exactly what it is. Um, and Anox 16, not this specific expression, but it's related. Anox 16 is a is a whiskey very, very close to my heart and the whiskey rev. It was one of those whiskies that sat in our collection that we felt, it wasn't that we didn't want to share it with everybody else. It was quite a subtle whiskey and we loved it so much that it was one of those ones that we shared together. And it wasn't one that we easily threw out and around because we we felt maybe not everyone would get it. And we used to put it in all sorts of lineups, that Anox 16, that's long discontinued, unfortunately. Um, and it just did a wonderful job. Even in a lineup, a vertical lineup of just Anok whiskies against the 12 special releases, the 22 even, um, the 16 always shone very, very brightly. But Richard, the good spot, and thank you very, very much for your generous virtual dram. Thanks for all your support, Richard. Cheers. Whiskey Freedom is in, good to see you, Fraser. He's saying, evening comrades and Aquavite. Hoyt is also here, good to see you, Hoyt. And Luna Aaron, wonderful, Luna. Great to have you all in. So, yeah, I was caught a wee bit short. Um, I don't know who's, who asked the question. Um, I should have gone back and kind of scrubbed through the video to try and find it, but it's a two hour long video and it would have meant that I'd have to let, listen to my own voice for a while, right? So I'm not sure who it was, but I decided that rather than go back and put all the effort into the, that original article, I've linked it in the description below. You can read it later if you want, but it's kind of at least two years out of date now. Things have moved on considerably since then. And I thought, well, I'm not going to go through all of that again because I put a lot of work into that, um, doing price matrices and things. And um, This time I decided, you know, I'm just going to have a think and have a look at the, the distilleries that I feel comfortable are bringing a, a well-presented product at good prices and just I'll study the prices and the expressions from those guys and compare them. And that's what I did. Um, and my instinct was reaffirmed by doing that. It was, it was quite um, interesting. I want to share it with you. But I also want to hear from you guys. Where do you think the value is coming from right now? Where is the good quality whiskey coming at a price that it's everybody can participate? Eric is in. Good to see you. Eric Waite is saying, Aquavite, I'm going to do a tour of Rebecca Creek Distillery in San Antonio, Texas tonight. Oh, you're in Texas. Of course you are, Eric. Fantastic. But I'll be able to watch the first hour of the live stream. Great to have you joining, my friend. Good to have you in. And I hope you're having a cracking time out there in Texas. I'll see you there next month. Neil Cochran is in. Good to see you, Neil. Um, my friend and uh, fellow Whiskey Club member from Glasgow. So I'll tell you, I'll go through the distilleries and I'll just rhyme out the distilleries that I feel arguably are still bringing um, a decent presentation and good value. And I'm going to leave out a few from here because Perhaps their presentation is a wee bit weak. Like Glen Goyne always bring out fantastic value. I, I really believe that. Um, I said that they were my producer of the year last year just because of how much I continually connect with Glen Goyne. But it's always a wee bit frustrating to me that they're kind of pointed a wee bit too much to mass market. And there's not a lot of the expressions that come out of Glen Goyne that's kind of pointed more to me. However, it's still a fantastic product. But while they're still bringing things out of 43% everywhere and not really upping things and telling us that they're not uh, colouring or uh, chill filtering and things. Um, so distilleries that are still good um, 
distilleries that are bringing a decent value, but don't, let's say they don't fill all the ABCDs, I've kind of left them out. But I'll run through some of these distilleries with you and see if any of them spark with you guys. Aaron, Balblair, Benriac, Benromac, Bunahaven, Deanston, that's obviously in alphabetical order, Glenallachie, Glen Cadham, Glendronach, Glen Scotia, Knock Do, Loch Lomond, Springbank, and Tomatin. The ones that I listed and studied but left out because of the presentation issues, I'll tell you, is, were Aberlour, Glen Farkless, Glen Goyne, Glen Murray, and Poultney. Just in case you're wondering hey, why I wouldn't mention those guys. Whiskey Radar is saying Aquavite to me, Aaron. And until recently, Bal Blair. Absolutely, Whiskey Radar. Same's true for Ben Romack. So when you say Ben Romack, I think you're matching Ben Romack with Aaron as opposed to Bal Blair. Now, that original article that I did uh, way back in 2017, it's linked below, is littered with Bal Blairs, start to finish, because it was undeniable. Now, okay, we're talking about vintage whiskies. We're talking about whiskies that, whiskies that displayed vintages rather than age statement. So just to distinguish, if it's a vintage, all the whiskey in the bottling is from that year. If it's an age statement, the youngest component is that age. So theoretically, in an age statement bottle, it could potentially be a wee bit more expensive perhaps, or it could be that they've used older whiskies to make up that product at that age statement, whereas a vintage, everything is from the same year. Um, but regardless, the, all the Balblair products, the, the 05, uh, the 90, the 91, uh, the 99, the 83, they were, they're all, so many of them appear in that list because of how fantastic they were as a value proposition. And they said natural colour on the label, they said until filtered on the label. It, it just, it ticked all the boxes and it was pointed directly at us. What happened recently with Balblair, and, and I can see that now because what I've got is an average price for each of the core range uh, marker points, 10, 12 years, 15 years, 18 years, 21 and 25. And where Balblair was like a green stripe under the average cost for everything, they're now red for everything. They've gone quite a bit more expensive, which is the same actually as Pulteney, their uh, sibling distillery. They're both um, owned by the same parent company in their house. Um, and they've kind of done the same thing. They've repackaged and rebranded both those distilleries. And who's suffering? Well, us, because the prices have shot up. Colors Blue Things is saying Aquavite. So many of those been React, Glen Allachie, Aaron, Glendronach in particular. Now, there's a couple of uh, kind of new guys there. Aaron is really coming to the fore. Glendronach has been, has been re-energized fantastically well in recent years. Uh, Glen Allachie is brand new and been React also. So these are quite new. So there are producers that are bringing out um, entire core ranges for whiskey enthusiasts not for mass market, for people that truly appreciate whiskey. So I'll just throw those out there and I think I'll get on while there's so many in and work out who is going to win the heels from the last recycled review. Donald Rance is saying it's tricky to find value here in Ontario, Canada eh, with scotch. It's usually found in the older Canadian uh, and limited run Canadian whiskies here. JP Weiser's 35 for $200 is probably the best value. Wow. So that would be about £120, or, although I don't really know what's going on with the currency right now with our situation here. But it seems for a 35-year-old whiskey, that's really good value. Multi-Haggis Muncher Matthew, good to see you, is saying Caden Head offer pretty much unbeatable value for money in terms of price. The age statement with most offerings at cast strength. Fully agree with Caden Heads. Everything that they put out there, I would say, is always carefully selected, always good value. Um, and there's always a bit of a, a run on most of the good stuff that they put out as well because people are just confident just to buy it. However, independent bottlers are not factored in here tonight. I'm looking at this from a kind of global perspective. I'm hoping that most of the whiskies and distilleries I'm going to throw out there tonight are things that people connect with regardless of where they live. And while there might be differences in price, of course, um, 
hopefully none of them are, it's, it's not all over the place. Hopefully the ones that I'm going to share with you tonight that I believe that are really good value, you can get for good value as well, regardless of where you are. Mott Mariners is in, good to have you saying, I was a great fan of Ben Riach, but haven't had any recent bottling since the 50-year-old finishes that, that that really floated my boat. Any recommendations? Um, I went to a Ben Riach tasting recently, and I have to say I liked everything. Um, and I liked the language, I liked the way they were putting things together. Um, I would say that, um, I would even go so far to say is that as long as it's not too expensive, you're not, I don't think you're going to get caught out. If you know it's a style or a bottling that's, that fits with your preferences, Ben React seems to be a pretty safe bet right now, honestly. Whiskey Bowman, Chris, good to see you in. He's saying, can't argue with Buna 12 for £30. I agree. Uh, I got from Amazon. Now, Amazon's a bit of a bizarre thing in there because uh, Amazon are undercutting even the traditional online retailers that we would normally go to, the kind of Abbey's, Master Malts, Whiskey Exchanges and things. Um, but the, but it's, the prices are up and down on Amazon and you can't always be guaranteed to get what you're after. The, the range is a bit more limited, but it's getting bigger all the time. There's a brand new exclusive whiskey uh, just been launched uh, on Amazon. Uh, I don't want to say what it is because it's in the quiz at the end. <laughs> so you guys can share it amongst yourself if you want to give it away. But yeah, White is saying surprisingly, Johnny Walker Green Label is a decent value. I would agree. I would agree. You, Johnny Walker is one of those expressions that jump up and down in price. Um, sometimes you get a good deal at duty free at the airport. Sometimes you just see it, it's, it's priced well. And other times you just see it priced ridiculously highly. I, I just don't understand. Um, but I would agree, and I do have a wee bit of a soft spot for Johnny Walker Green Label. I quite like it. Chris Mira is saying, I can get to I love what Glenn Cadam is doing. I agree. Tried the 10 and the 15, really nice stuff. Quite subtle whiskies, um, very kind of confident in their own skin. Uh, clearly not, uh, they're happy to put out a 15 year old product as pale straw color. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Skippy Van Pobb is saying, uh, uh, good to see you in, is saying, sipping a Ben React 2001 cast strength right now. Fantastic. Skippy Shear with, um, with her friend that was asking about the Ben Reacts just back there, I think it was Andy C, was asking and tell him if it's one that you should try and track down. Okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try my best to do a, a screen share with this new software and see if I can show you all the names who have entered. I'm going to attempt to use my virtual assistant here again to randomly draw the number, but I'll do what I always do with these things and shuffle the screen up as well. So this is to win. Uh, this is everybody that entered for the recycled review heels. There were six drams. I think there's at least six, could be seven, I'm not really sure. Um, a, so, I, you know, what I tend to do is I, I try where it's not been finished in company, I try and save a wee bit or pour off a sample or two so that when I throw away some of these bottles, I know I appreciate sometimes I'm throwing them away and I realize that where people are located, they might not be able to get a hold of some of the expressions or maybe they're discontinued, you can't buy them anymore and things. Um, so I just kind of keep a little selection of samples um, so that folk might have the chance of uh, enjoying them. It's quite difficult to manage. <laughs> um, there was, there's almost 400 comments on that video that I had to go through and p pick out all the names of the people that entered. Um, but I hope it's worth it. Good luck to everybody. I'll try and share this screen. See if that works. So hopefully what you can see here is a screen with everybody on it now. It's, I'm over 300 entries here, I believe. Yep, down to Sid Martin is there at the end on 314. Now, you might find that you see names that appear more than once. You're only allowed to enter once, but patrons, uh, as part of the Patreon thing, get extra entries. What I'm going to do here is just mix this up, randomize it again, and just for good measure, I'll randomize it another time. And I'll pick somebody between zero and 314. And I'll uh, try clicking back to me to see if it works.
Hmm. Seems to work. I think I'm back with you. Hey Siri, give me a random number between zero and 314. A random number between zero and 314 is 188. 188, right, I'm gonna click back to the screen. I'm just gonna go straight to 188 and see who that is. 188 is Doug Ratcliffe. There we go, Doug Ratcliffe. Congratulations, Doug. You've won yourself a set of samples from, uh, from the Recycled Reviews. So what I'll do now is uh, just quickly go in and do the exact same and draw the patron uh, giveaway as well. Do the exact same thing for patrons so that they've got a chance of the um, more or less the exact same set of samples. And I should have that on another tab here. And you'll see here that all the bonus entries. Let's randomize this. See how many we have, 122. Do this quickly, randomize it again. Hey Siri, give me a random number. <laughs> give me a random number between zero and one hundred and twenty-two. A random number between zero and one hundred and twenty-two is sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Who is this? We've got James McGoran. James, fantastic. Now James is a relatively new patron. I just joined a couple of months ago. Congratulations, James. You've won yourself a set of uh, recycled review samples. So congratulations to both of you, to Doug and uh, James, and I'll get those shipped out uh, either over the course of tomorrow on the weekend or maybe early next week. Um, I'll uh, contact those guys directly. I know how to go hold of James, and I'll need to get hold of Doug through the comments. I hope to continue this, these giveaways. Uh, I think it's a nice thing to do. Um, I ship a ton of samples. Over my shoulder here, you'll see uh, loads and loads and loads of samples. I mean, the channel is founded on that whole concept of sharing whiskey, and I share a lot. It's, a, it's great fun, though. But I do spend a lot of money with uh, a Royal Mail service. Um, Hey-ho. So congratulations, Doug and James. Well done, guys. So before I uncork my, uh, the whiskey that I bought in Glasgow today, Good Spirits Company, I'm going to share with you, I've got a kind of a three, two, one of my top three uh, best value uh, distilleries, the ones that I feel are bringing it right now, the ones that I feel are bringing the best value, best presentation, and ones that I would kind of feel confident pushing people in a direction, and even though they, they might not like everything from that distillery, um, it might be a comfortable place for them to explore and not spend too much money. And number three is uh, the dram I am sitting sipping right now, it's Aaron. And the reason for that is that um, there are some Aaron's that I don't really connect with, um, the, the wine finishes and things, some of the non-age statement stuff, uh, but Aaron seems to just be getting kind of better and better. And while I didn't love the first couple of drams out of this 10-year-old when I opened it fresh uh, just the other night, it's got better already and I'm certainly enjoying this dram right now. And this is £34. But more than that, it tells you on the label and huge writing, it's got an age statement, which we love, okay? So if we apply the A, B, C, Ds, A for age statement, it's there. B for bottling strength, 46%, fantastic. Because it's at 46%, they have the luxury of not having to chill filter, and they write here in big letters, non-chill filtered. And they're also brave enough to put on there as well, natural color. And it's actually a very nice natural color. So, um, Interestingly, on the Aquavite uh, Facebook page, Andy Bell of Aaron saw the image and he commented and he, and he went to some lengths to explain and to talk about the new branding and what goes into this. And he talked about uh, first fill bourbon. When I sipped this, I thought it was maybe even some virgin oak in there, um, but it's first fill bourbon. That was what was bringing that sweetness. Um, but if you want to go and look at the Aquavite 
uh, Facebook page, you'll see that there's a response from Andy Bell. He's a brand ambassador, quite a young guy, a great guy. If you've ever been to one of Andy's tastings, uh, he's a great guy um, to engage with. Um, and he gives a wee bit of information on the Facebook page there about this particular product and the rebranding in general. Um, but I would say I would feel very safe taking a whiskey enthusiast, somebody really curious about whiskey, and taking them to Aaron and saying, explore Aaron, uh, maybe spend a bit more time with the age statement stuff. Um, now, I don't have a moderator tonight, guys. I don't I don't think I've seen Jason in, and I don't think the Whiskey Rev is in. Um, so I may be missing things. I've just seen that Graham Young has bought me a virtual dram as well. Saying, there seems to be even more hue to that rye. I'm going to talk about that, Graham. I'm going to talk about it in just a second. So you've probably had a wee look. I've poured another sample from it. And I'll bring it up. In fact, I'll do it now after I finish speaking about Aaron. Um, but yes, I would be very comfortable putting somebody towards Aaron and saying, enjoy. It's a good place to explore. Um, certainly the core range stuff. I mentioned £34 for the 10-year-old. Um, the Aaron 14, although it's discontinued right now, it was great value. It was all kind of hovered around the £50 mark. Um, their 18 year old is 77, so right about average, maybe a nudge under average, maybe a wee nudge over. Um, and their 21 year old, I thought was fantastic value as well. I've got a bottle of the Aaron 21 year old open and being shared downstairs just now. And that's, you can pick up a 21 year old Aaron, super complex for about 150, 120 pounds. So that's my number three spot. Cheers, Graham. Thank you very much for your dram. Let's give everybody an update on that rye. So this is a bottle of a, it's only 40%. This is a Gagetown uh, straight rye Canadian uh, grain spirit. And it came uh, with a little piece of smoked applewood around the top. An idea was you open it and you drop the applewood in and you mature it at home with this little chunk of applewood you might be able to see it's kind of floating about, or not floating, sinking um, inside. Now this is completely clear, as clear as tap water. And uh, what I did is I took a, a sample of, and when I did that, I had a wee glass of this. I thought it was wonderful, really sweet. Not whiskey as you know it, but very sweet, very easy um, to sip. Very green apple, but sweet dessert apple. Um, like a golden delicious, super, super even if I smell it now a bit. Very apple-like. Not as spicy as you would imagine a rye to be, much more mild and soft. I suppose that's consistent with the 40% ABV. Um, but I also, just today, when I was getting ready for this, I poured off my second sample. Now, you can't really see much difference in color on the sample bottles. But you can see that it's just going a very, very pale straw, kind of very light white wine colour almost. So the wood is starting to have a little bit of an effect after two weeks. Now I've kept a little ticket that suggests that you go a month, two months, six weeks, that kind of order. You don't take it too far. But I'm just going to keep uh, taking little samples out and then try and work it away to fish out that wood um, before it gets wee bit too woody. Eric is saying somebody dropped a chocolate bar in your bottle of Canadian whiskey. It does look a wee bit like that, Eric. Gregor is saying, for those who wonder, Aquavite, Aaron replied to me, they're going to re-release the finishes series, the core range, with new packaging, with some colour in the labels. Colour in the labels is good, as long as it's in the labels. Lynn Aaron is saying, even the special distillery bottles, James McTaggart, are about 70 euros. Yeah, and they bring out, um, like their cast strength bothy, is, it's not an age statement, but it's very good value for a cast strength. Um, always an engaging dram. Uh, again, good for an enthusiast, not one that you would use to kind of draw in uh, um, somebody that you're trying to entice uh, into Scotch whiskey. Um, it's something, uh, most of their whiskies at Aaron, I would say, point uh, towards the enthusiasts, the whiskey lovers, the people that are really engaging with it. Um, I always get a lot of orange citrus. Aaron's can be quite floral to me. Um, sometimes a wee bit saline, I'm finding. Uh, and I think at the start, um, 
the, the first releases that we tasted from Aaron, I'm going back some years now, uh, they were kind of all over the map a wee bit. There, uh, sometimes it was a bit of a gamble, I think, to pick up Aaron. That was just my personal opinion. That's how I felt about it. But I don't feel it's like that now. I feel like they've really come into their own. I feel like they're bringing out great, great products. And when I do tell people to look at Aaron, they seem to be uh, enjoying it. And I tend to get quite good feedback. Now, let's finish off that Aaron. We've got a clean glass. Is Captain 3D in? Is Phil and Deepa here? They're in Scotland. They've been coming out with some great, uh, there they are, Captain 3D. Hi, I'll drop it in from Isla. Had a lovely week. Campbelltown tomorrow. Good for you guys. They've been in their channel, uh, Captain 3D's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Phil and Deepa have been dropping in um, on all the kind of whiskey shops all over Scotland and beyond and just giving you scans of the shelf. I think they're on a kind of treasure hunt trying to see what loot they can pick up to take home. Um, leverage the weak sterling, I guess, as well. Vicky Thompson is saying, uh, the bargain, I, I guess the best bargain I ever got was a bottle of Bunahaven, 25-year-old for £90. Wow, well, I checked Bunahaven, and I can tell you that it's £345 for their 25-year-old. So that, Vicky, I don't know when that was, but that's a tremendous bargain. I think I'd be hard pushed to beat that one. Well done, Vicky. I have put Aaron 12 in my glass now. Aquavite, Wissy Weekend Drama saying, good for you. And I think that Aaron 12 as well, I didn't, I haven't got it that price here. It was the, the price for the 10-year-old I put into this uh, spreadsheet here. But I think the Aaron 12-year-old is only £45 or of that order. Not too bad. Uh, maybe even a wee bit less, actually. Toon Van Rooge is in. Good to see you, Toon. What's your opinion about the Colhome and Sanic? I really like it. Um, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Again, at Kilhoman is one of those distilleries that I think is getting better and better. I've got, I keep saying this. Sorry if, to repeat myself. I've got Kilhomans downstairs that I don't enjoy. I don't think they're that great. Um, but I think the Kilhomans, certainly the ones that are coming out now that are not enjoyable, are very few and far between. Very unlikely for that to happen now. The majority of Kilhomans that are coming out now will be much, much better. And even things like Mahir Bay, and uh, Sanic or Sanic, um, uh, these whiskies are going to be um, getting consistently better because Colhoman are having a chance to produce more and more whisky, which I know that's still in demand, but they're getting a chance to lay down and mature and age more and more uh, stock as well and bring a better and better product. Whisky and Office is saying, like in the new office layout, Roy, thank you very, very much, my friend. Vicky's saying, can't confirm or deny if we have or don't have a friend who may or may not work for Distel. That is a handy friend to have. Good for you, Vicky. Superb. So number two distillery, if we're talking about value distilleries, this is a distillery that I'm on record saying I don't really like. Um, perhaps not while I've been uh, on YouTube, but my friends will know that this distillery is one that I didn't really connect with. There was a local off-license, kind of a liquor store, you would call it, close to me, and they were selling a bottle from this the distillery, and I bought it and I brought it home, and it was awful. It was it was so spirity, so young, so harsh. It, it was, I mean, even with a lot of water and even using it with mixers, the harshness you could taste through it. But that was a lot of years ago now. And uh, this distillery have more than got their act together. Um, this distillery are bringing it now, and they're bringing fantastic stuff. Skippy Van Pobbe saying, Aquavita, I have a half bottle of Aaron 14 left. Better take care of it. There's no rush. Uh, enjoy it. Um, it's going to be hard for you to get the Aaron 14 again, um, certainly in the packaging that you've got, I would say. Colorist Blue thinks it's an Aquavita. How could we... Be forgetting signatory. I got a 21 year old Glen Elgin, non chill filled at 46% for £51. I've got loads of signatory bottlings downstairs, and they are uh, generally all very, very good value. But for, for the purpose of this discussion, I've specifically stayed away uh, from kind of small vatting, single casks, and independent bottlers, because it has to be something that I can recommend to somebody that they can go out and engage with and hopefully be able to find wherever they live. But I agree with you. 
often very, very good value. You've got cracking Glen Talkers from their recently two excellent bottles of Klein Leash that I didn't pay a lot of money for. And remind me. I'll come back to that. Can't remember what the other one was. Then Aaron saying Amazon still had Aaron 14 a week ago. Fantastic. It's not disappeared yet. You will still get it. But as we know, they're not available. Escogsmart is saying, have you ever considered selecting and buying a private cask? If so, from which distillery? Um, yeah, it would all be everything is just a question of price. There's loads of distilleries out there I would like to do that with. Um, but all in good time. I don't have the money or the wherewithal to do that. Uh, certainly not right now. Um, if you've got any ideas how to achieve that Scogsmart, I'd be all ears. <laughs> Our bag, I suppose you could do it as part of a team, a crowd, right? Our bag is saying, Aquavita, 20 years ago, all whiskey was good to great value. Andy, I have to say, I know, I know. 20 years ago was before I was into it. Um, and, you know, I weep when I hear the stories. Even even when I first started to get into whiskey, 2005, 2006, things were not expensive back. They seemed expensive at the time. But in contrast now, I mean, they were great value if only we had the vision, right? That's not what it's about. It's about sharing it and drinking it. We, we can't lament the money that's been lost on bottles that we never even opened and tasted. Hoyt is saying, been enjoying my independent bottlings, some real treasures. I agree, Hoyt. And I think once you get to the, I think once you get to the um, the point where you start to understand the distillery, you feel a bit more comfortable gambling. I think uh, with some independent bottlers, uh, when, you, when especially when it's as I say, small vattings or single cask. Anyway, my number two good value distillery that I once dissed and now I love. is Loch Lomond. Yeah, this is a 12 year old. I've talked about that at length on this channel before. I have enjoyed it very, very much and I still continue to enjoy it. Um, and I picked up this today at Good Spirits Company in Glasgow. Um, I wasn't sure which one I was going to pick up when I walked in today. I knew I was going to pick up something from this distillery. They have such a breadth of flexibility there that they can pretty much produce anything on the Scotch whiskey spectrum. They can make grain, uh, they can make uh, various kinds of malt. Um, I I managed to get an invite up there in recent months and I spent a lot of time with Michael Henry, he spent a lot of time with me um, explaining everything and I recorded quite a lot of footage and I'm very keen to try and put a decent video together uh, to kind of do that visit and do that distillery some service because I think it's very interesting for everyone. If there's We make two kinds of whiskey in Scotland, grain and malt, and from that we can make uh, blended malt, blended grain, and blended scotch, and that gives us our five categories then. But they can do a single blend. They can take grain and malt from the same facility and make a blended scotch. And although it's not a defined category, it's a single blend. Very interesting distillery. But what's more interesting to me is the products that they're bringing out. Now, I'll tell you what I paid for this today. I paid uh, £75, I think. Something of that order. This is their 18-year-old Loch Lomond. And uh, I've tried this before. This is the first bottle I've owned. Um, and I'm fairly confident that my money was safe walking in and buying this today. But let's have a wee try. There's that glug. Let's see how this is presented. Loch Lomond, 18. Uh, let's see what information they give us. It doesn't say anything on the front, but I know on the back it does say non-chill filtered in big capital letters. It doesn't talk about colour. So perhaps with uh, these expressions, and they're in green bottles, um, but perhaps they reserve the right to use colour. Um, I don't know. I would prefer that they didn't, and they said so on the label, of course. I'm becoming more and more and more um, annoyed by that. It used to be something that I didn't really care about, um, but now it's frustrating a wee bit more. I don't want Scotch whisky to be embarrassed uh, when word gets out to the world at large that we're adding uh, sugar to whiskies. 
um, in order to polish them, to present them. Anyway, it's a mass market thing, I think. And uh, the producers that are starting to direct their whiskies more at enthusiasts, people that really don't mind about inconsistencies in colour or paler whiskies or whatever, people that rather go on flavour and experience rather than appearance. Um, so just, there's smoke on the nose here. But immediately this is a very, very rich, earthy whiskey. Very rich. You could be drawn in the direction of, it's different from Springbank, but you could be drawn in that direction. It's like a citrus, but it's not tart or sharp. It's like... A sweet, ripe orange. It's very. T you just. You just want to. Um. Um. My mouth is watering. I'm very tempted to go in and just leave it. Just sitting a wee bit longer. See it. Let it open up. Danny is here, Dan. Good to see you, Dan. I was just looking at that bottle, Aquavite. Um. Depends how much it is out where you are, Dan. I know you're in. I think you're in New Jersey. Um, but I think it's going to be a sub hundred dollar bottle. I hope so out there. Charles Ashworth is saying Aquavita. What's the logo on the top of your screen? Uh, good spot, Charles. Uh, that logo is now. If I can, uh, is there any way I can make it bigger? Is a uh, a barfly. <laughs> so I thought I'd have a bit of fun with it. It's something I was playing with uh, for t-shirt designs uh, before summer break. Um, and I put it away. It's kind of, when I do these things, it's not kind of just do it and then put it out there. I've, it's got to sit and I've got to try and get my head around it, whether it's something I, I can live with or enjoy or like. Um, but I was messing around and I, I dug it out and I decided, you know what, that might be a nice little watermark to go up in the top corner. McAllen fine and rare. It's, oops, it's, the chat has jumped, I apologise. They say no colour in the Loch Lomond 18, but in most of the other Loch Lomond expressions. Well, of course, uh, the Doc, McAllen Fine and Rare, being in Germany, where they've got to declare on the packaging if they've used E150A, they have more intelligence about that kind of thing. Thanks, Doc, thanks for letting us know. Uh, Driver Fish is saying, I had trouble getting hold of the, the McAllen edition number four. Last year, the edition number five is coming out shortly. Uh, do you know why these McAllens are difficult to get hold of? Because they're McAllen. Honestly, because they're McAllen. Because the distribution is terrible. I, it's managed and controlled. Um, it's the perception, they want to keep the perception that this is a uh, limited supply and exclusive and all of these things. Um, and it's a shame because the edition series for McAllen, um, I think we can engage with. I think it's decent. Um, I think it's wonderful whiskey. McAllen is wonderful whiskey. It's just not packaged and presented and priced for us. It's not pointed at enthusiasts. Um, but there's, you can't knock the quality of the spirit of what they're doing. Uh, good luck getting a hold of Edition 5. Um, I saw some labelling out on Twitter recently. Um, looked like some black labels or black and white labels, monochrome. Um, and then somebody had... Uh, Maybe it was just a, a Photoshop thing where it was a red label. But it's going to be interesting to see when it comes out. Um, I think it's easier to get edition series outside of the UK. Um, it was, they were freely available in Europe and freely available in the States when I've been traveling. Okay. And when I talk about the dock there, I'll uh, mention something. Uh, he put... Uh, a comment on Patreon, and I thought I'd read it out. He said, uh, when he's, so he's talking about value, and I think I get where he's coming from. He said, I'd like to take a broader view on the value subject price setting for whiskey follows first and foremost, a cost plus approach, at least when it comes to standard core expressions, including independent bottlers. I understand. For old and more posh expressions, supply, demand, and marketing, hullabaloo kicks in 
So we can easily exclude that segment. Absolutely, that's what I had done. Under those assumptions, it's fair to say that the basic expressions, uh, official bottlings and Indy, should have the highest value. Margins are low and volumes have to be high to ensure global market penetration. Um, and then he talks about indie bottlers for a series and um, these white label expressions and things where we don't get to see what the distillery is. Um, so it's supermarket white labels or, um, you know, just white label whiskies like he's mentioned McWarrior and things like that. Um, and of course, then he goes on to talk about um, all the complexities of local taxes and everything like that. But he sums up by saying, now the challenge is to find the good ones in the armada of offerings. And I think that's the biggest problem in Scotch whiskey right now, the confusion and the absolute, the deluge of just in official bottlings from distilleries. It's so confusing and it's difficult for even us to keep up. Um, somebody stepping into the scene must find it really difficult to get an anchor. And then he goes on to say, and this is why I mentioned this because he's absolutely right, but that's what communities like ours are for. So this is exactly it. When the prices seem to be constantly going up all the time, there's money to be made. More people come into the, to the landscape, more whiskies, more expressions come into the landscape, and we can't buy them all and try them all and drink them all. It's impossible. But we do come together like this as a community and share with each other where we think the really good stuff is coming from for decent prices. So I hope that you guys in the lounge tonight um, are sharing with your, your peers, your other barflies, where you're getting the decent experiences from. I know that you do that week to week anyway. Richard Hall saying, Aquavita, the barfly with a Glen Cairn would make a great t-shirt. I'm thinking about it, Richard. I'm thinking about it. I think it would certainly... Uh, be one that'd be interesting for you guys that come and, and hang out here regularly. Um, Charles Ashworth is saying, nice to see I'm not the only one that has them circling while having a dram flies. <laughs> what is the difference between the standard Inchmorin versions Aquavitae? Um, I'm not very sure. Um, for a while, I was of the impression that Inchmorin was peated, but it's Inchmon that is the peated expression. Um, the ones that I've connected most with have been the standard Loch Lomond expressions. And like I say, it's very, very difficult, I think, to go out and buy and try everything. Um, so little by little, I remember a, a review by Phil at Whiskey Wednesday, either earlier this year or later, uh, last year, where he was uh, reviewing some of the Loch Lomond stuff. And uh, when he got to try, I think, the Inchmurran 18, no Loch Lomond 18, he got really, really excited about them and started to talk at length, um, not just through in the video review that you see, but in our in, in our chat, we were chatting back then. Um, and he was getting really excited and raving about them. Um, and and when, when people do that, you you know that it's not just, it's not they're not just saying, oh, this is a good whiskey, you should buy this. They're actively in their downtime excited about these things the the whiskey is connecting with them and moving them and when it's somebody like phil who's in the industry he works and and retail when he enthuses like that i kind of take notice and he's absolutely right about loch lomond certainly recent loch lomonds let's go and let's have a wee go at this one Wow, <clears throat> very earthy. A wee bit thinner and kind of more minerally than I expected. There's fruit there, but it's kind of like, it's like it's, like, it's almost like a mulchy uh, fruit. I, I, I just can't put my finger on it. It's like, it's like an almost, like a marmalade type thing or, or 
but not tart or sharp like marmalade. It's like like sweet orange. A wee bit drier, a wee bit shorter on the finish than you might imagine. Slight bitter chocolate on the finish. Mineralic, minerally. Like I say, as you can see, I've just opened this as a neck pour. It's always difficult on a neck pour. But Moorish, very tasty. Red cola, cola cubes, like a cherry. Very nice. I'm going to enjoy spending a bit of time with that. So that's my number two distillery. I think the stuff coming out of Loch Lomond is very, very decent, very good value as well. I'll pull up this wee spreadsheet and I'll just give you some ideas of just the standard Loch Lomond. I didn't go into Inch Murrins and Inch Moans. Um, I didn't go into any kind of special editions or whatever. This was just the standard Loch Lomonds I looked at for the sake of simplicity. 12-year-old is typically cheaper than £40. It's, it's not a bad price. Like I say, this 18-year-old was sitting about the £75 mark, I think. Um, so buying on average, um, actually, no, it's actually quite a bit cheaper for, a, for an 18-year-old. Uh, the average of an 18 year old of the distilleries that I listed earlier in the live stream was 89 pounds. So at 75, this is cheaper than average. Now, Loch Lomond don't seem to have uh, many easily available older expressions, but they do have a very wide range. They have a decent breadth of product. Let's see what you guys are saying. Gabriel Wilding, that looks like a new name. Gabriel, welcome in. He's saying, can get some value in auctions. I fully agree, especially the stuff that fly under the radar. I just opened a cast strength 19-year-old Isla blend by Duncan Taylor called Dimensions. I think I remember those bottlings, which I got for £50 via auction. Nosing it now, and it smells amazing. I think I remember the graphic um, on those Dimensions bottles. Glad you're enjoying it. It sounds like you've managed to pick yourself up a bargain for 19-year-old Isla for £50. Whiskey Franco, good to see you. Same can't stay long, but wanted to pop in and say hello to everyone. Good to have you, my friend, stays just as long as you can. These things are always optional. Drop in and out as you please. It's the idea of it all. Just like any pub should be. Uh, Whiskey Nobbs is saying... I mean, we had an interesting, uh, sorry, had an independent bottling of a 13-year-old Bushmills finished in Laphroaig casks last night. These guys could charge what they wanted because where else would you get it? 60 pounds a bottle, by the way. Bushmills is one that I've never really connected with. I probably need, I bet there are really decent things from Bushmills. The weekend, Whiskey Weekend Drama Scene, I got Fanta notes and the taste after a while. I can see how you might get that out of this. That kind of sweet orange thing I'm getting. Good spot, colourless blue things as well. He's asking Aquavite, what are those coherence behind you? That's another one that offers great value. So I didn't include Glengyle Distillery in this little matrix, a spreadsheet, because there isn't a fully fledged core range yet. Still quite youthful, of course. The 12 is out there and it's established and it's great stuff. They've released uh, a few different uh, kind of, I think they've released up to a 15 year old as a special edition. Uh, it sold out very, very quickly. They've got an eight year old cask strength as well. And that's the two bottles that sit there, the standard Cokerin 12 and the eight year old. And I think that they deserve special mention because I think that they, it's certainly that Cokerin 12 year old to my taste and palate is up there with one of the best value, best whiskies that you can buy full stop right now it's wonderful 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 stuff not always obvious it's quite a subtle thing i think um i'm not sure you would use it to try and uh, get somebody into whiskey but anybody that loves their whiskey anybody that enjoys whiskey give them cocaine and ask them to sit and savor it for a while i think it's fabulous stuff that's why it's there because i believe it deserves special mention of course recently um they brought out a very young kind of three-year-old 
peated, heavily peated version as well that went down very well. You might remember the, the Ralphie stream that we did together um, back in March. Um, one of the whiskies he brought along was that uh, very young Cochran heavily peated. I didn't buy one of those. I also have to make a bit of a confession. How many are in tonight? 222 of you are in. Okay, I have to backpedal a wee bit because uh, two weeks ago, you might uh, remember me talking about the the Trayvan Ardbeg 19-year-old. And I said at £169, I wouldn't be buying it. Phil and Deepa sent a message from Isla <laughs> uh, to say that they could pick one up from the distillery for me if uh, if I wanted it's selling at retail at distillery. And I didn't respond straight away. I didn't respond. I didn't respond. And then I thought, damn it. And I was suckered. Um, so I've, I've way, way overspent. I've ridiculously overspent recently. Um, I need to find a way to uh, slow down a little bit. But I'm curious about that Ardbeg 19, and I think that it'll sell um, quite quickly too. And it might be one of those ones that I try at some point, point down the road and realise that it's damn fine whiskey and I wish I'd picked one up and just kind of swallowed uh, the higher price on it. Uh, regardless, I am picking up an Ardbeg and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing with you at some point in the future what I think about that and whether... But I don't think I'm going to... If you're going to be, if you've already got an idea that you're going to be going after that Ardbeg, nothing I say is going to stop you. And if you've decided that that's not something you're going to engage in, I don't think I'm going to convince you either. Ardbeg seems to be one of those whiskies. I don't know why. Mark is saying, ha, we all would do that. Donald Rance is saying, Bushmills. Uh, are just nice, lovely drams that I'm sentimental about. Even although they're 40%, yep, uh, if you want to explore Irish single malts, I'd suggest starting with the Turconnell range. Thanks, Donald. I can't see past single pots to Irish, as you all very, very well know. Hmm. Bitter orange chocolate, plain bitter orange chocolate. Try to work out what that confectionery note is. Is it cola? Is it cherry? I'm going to enjoy spending a bit of time with this. And I'm going to enjoy seeing how it switches up um, as it breathes a little bit as well. So I guess... We're coming close to the point when there's so many of you in that you're going to be wondering uh, when I'm going to share what I think the best value uh, distillery out there right now is. Um, and, and, you know, it's one of those distilleries that I think it flies far too low under the radar for everybody. I don't understand why. Um, everything I've had from them is at least very, very good, often fantastic. But it's one of those ones that you just relax and really enjoy because it's always such fantastic value. Um, they have a very good range, core range. It's available pretty much everywhere. And I'm a wee bit nervous about it as well. Um, I'll keep you hanging for a wee bit longer and see if anybody can guess the distillery. Uh, I'm talking about what I think, the distillery that I think uh, subjectively and to a certain extent objectively, if you just look at prices, offer probably the best value in Scotch whiskey right now. I hope it's the same where you are, whether you're in Europe or the States or wherever you are in the world right now. I hope that you find the same with this distillery. When Aaron's saying, then we have to pre-order right away when you give the name of the distillery. Is it Deanston? <laughs> Go on, is it? It's not Deanston. Uh, I do think Deanston, uh, it's on the list here. Deanston is is on point um, or average. I think the prices are pretty good. Um, even their aged product is is reasonably affordable as well. You can buy Deanston 18 for, for £75. It's a great price for an 18-year-old. Um, Deanston 15 Organic is a bit pricey at £60, but remember that's an organic product. Uh, their 12-year-old, which I love, um, as you all very, very well know, is £40 and less, £35 sometimes. Deanston is a good shout. Let's see what you guys think. See if anybody picks it out. 
James McGoran, not Lee, Lee Woodrow Deanston, Hoyt to St. Deanston, Springbank, our baggy is saying. Uh, Springbank, yeah, uh, I think Springbank deserve a shout. Um, unfortunately, Springbank 21 is, is a pricey prospect at £200 plus. Um, Springbank 18, I've got £90 in here, but I noticed that Springbank 18 has just launched over 100 now. Springbank is getting a wee bit out of hand. I think the 10-year-old at £40, £45 is still a cracking whiskey, arguably the best 10-year-old out there. Um, even newcomers like the the Benromac 10 and things that are fantastic can't touch Springbank 10 yet. So, yeah, it's worthy. It's definitely worthy, but that's not the one I've picked. Tullibardin, good shout. That's uh, one that flies under the radar as well. I think the quality, um, they always threaten that they're going to get better, and I probably need to engage with it a wee bit more because they might be getting there now. The Califine and Rare, Glenn Murray, good shout. It's on the spreadsheet, but it's not that one. Matt 69 saying the suspense is killing me. Nobody's guessed it yet. Wow, this is amazing. So I need to justify this. Just going to look to see if anybody's got it. Okay, I'll give you some clues. They do a 12-year-old, and the 12-year-old uh, from this distillery is typically £30 and under. Um, it's 43%, the 12-year-old, or maybe it's actually it's 40. I think it's 40. That's a kind of entry-level one. But after that, they start to get good. I, I lament their 16-year-old strongly. It's gone, and I really, really miss it. I've already mentioned it in this stream tonight. Um. The 18-year-old you can pick up for a great price of about £75. It's fantastic whiskey presented really, really well. They used to do a 22-year-old for sub £100. I think it was £88 for a 22-year-old of 40... I think it was 46% from memory. Um, but it's Anok. Anok. I'm not going to open this bottle tonight... Um, I would like to get together with the Whiskey Rev. I tasted this today, and this is fabulous. And this is very much like the 16-year-old that I lament. Um, but let me explain to you why. One of the best bottles I've got in my cabinet just now, and I have to reach past this regularly and stop hitting it as hard as I have, is an Anok. This is Anok 24-year-old. And before you start shouting at me and saying, Roy, come on, a 24-year-old whiskey, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Good value. This is one of the best value things in Scotch whiskey right now. This is 24 years old. It says on the label, non-chill filtered, natural colour. It's at 46% and it's £115. £115 is a lot of money. You can look anywhere now. The Balblair days have gone. The old Pulteney days have gone. You can look anywhere now for a 24-year-old product for that price. And I challenge, outside of perhaps some bargains from independent bottlers and things, where are you going to get it? The price is one thing, but the whiskey has to be good. Just look at my peers on YouTube, look at Mark from Whiskey Whistle, look at uh, Whiskey in the Six, Rob, look at what other people are saying about this whiskey. This isn't a Caden Heads, an independent baller. This isn't like, this isn't one of the cool kids. This is available everywhere. It's very widespread. Now, Anok, Nock Do Distillery, which is Anok, they don't make a lot, about 2 million litres a year. It's a bit bigger than Glen Goyne, but... Um, you know, they're not a big distillery. Um, they're Highland. Uh, they're very, very close to Speyside. They're arguably Speyside, but they're uh, officially a Highland distillery. And they just keep bringing it. But I want to tell you why I'm nervous. This is an Inverhouse brand. So Pulteney has been rebranded and the price is cranked up to the point that I um, kind of distanced myself a wee bit. And Bal Blair, the same thing has happened. To an extent, I mean, forty pounds, forty-five pounds for a Balblair twelve, I think, is still worth a look to see what it's like. Um, but the rest of the Balblair range and Old Pulteney range has gone up to the point that um, the fifteen-year-old is more expensive than the seventeen-year-old used to be. Um, arguably, it's up there um, at the point that the twenty-one-year-old used to be in Old Pulteney. So this is the same producer. So this is not going to last forever. 
Let's see how many of you are shouting at me for that little announcement. Uh, Arbagi is saying, great shout. Gregor is saying, yes. Whiskey Radar has said, Anok. Um, the Whiskey Bowman Chris is saying, I have that 22-year-old Anok. That was a wee bit soft. The 22-year-old was a wee bit soft. That was quite chocolatey, soft, very, very chocolatey whiskey. But it was great. And it was so inexpensive. Um, this is not, this is much more complex and more vibrant than the 22 year old. It's a different prospect altogether. And there's something that I get in Anox as well. And I'm going to pour this because I'm getting excited about it. Um, that I get in a lot of Anox. And it is a kind of clove. Um, uh, it, certainly, it's, it's obvious in the 12 for me to my palate. But I sometimes get it in, in their other expressions as well. And I get it in this. But what I also get in this is a wonderful scoop, and I'm getting it just now as I pour it, of dunnage. You know, leather, bizarre orange. So the orange that I'm getting from this Loch Lomond is sweet. It's like ripe orange. It's, like, it's almost like it might be a marmalade or a cooked orange or something. I, I don't know. But the orange from this is vibrant. And bright, it's literally like when you crack the peel on an orange and you get that kind of that spit of citrus. But the old kind of dunnage uh, uh, aromas are there as well, that kind of leathery note, that, that kind of, as we say in Scotland, that fusty note is there. This is one that you sit with. Let's just have a wee sip. This bottle's been open a long time now. You can still buy this. You can buy this pretty much everywhere. And it's round about 115, 120 pounds of that order. 24 year old, very well presented whiskey and it's delicious. It's still very vibrant. It's still alive in the glass. So you're not, we're not talking 24 year old smooth whiskey here. We're talking about things, there's complexity here and grip. The clove thing isn't there just now. Whiskey Share the same, Glen Farkas 25 is 100 pounds. Can be 100 pounds. Sometimes you get it on special offer. Glen Farkas, 20, a 25 year old whiskey for 100 pounds is cracking value, but it's utterly inconsistent. Glen Farkas frustrate the hell out of me by presenting a 25 year old. You open it, you share it. It's wonderful stuff. You buy another bottle, it doesn't taste anything like the previous one. It's just Glen Farkas. It really is. However, 25 year old, guaranteed 25 years old for, I think I've got, I've got Glenn Farkas on this sheet here, £120. You get a 21-year-old for £94, according to this. Um, great value, but it's not always very consistent. Callan Fine Herrera saying, Aquaviti, don't be fooled by age, Roy. See Glenn Farkas. Maybe you're talking about the thing I've just mentioned there. Whiskey Bowman is saying, unfortunately, Anok is owned by the same company that up the price of Bala Blair and Opultney, exactly as I said, Chris. Um, Emery McGill is saying Edredour is a good value whiskey as well, quality and the maturation. Now Edredour is starting to get better, more consistent. The older stuff from Edredour was really all over the shop at times, it really was. Mark Slinger is saying, Roy, is the Anok 18 a good value dram? Absolutely, Mark. It's nothing like the 16 used to be. It's kind of more sherry profile. Um, uh, it's... Yeah, I don't know how I would compare it to this. Yes, it's a very good dra value dram. I would say the 18-year-old, £74 for an 18-year-old. The average price of an 18-year-old just now is about £90 of that order. So anything that's coming in under that is bringing us good value. Uh, Knockdo is bringing it at 74 One of the cheapest 18-year-olds out there, actually. In fact, I'm trying to find another 18-year-old in my list that can beat that, and there isn't one. 
uh, almost matched by Glenn Murray at 75, Deanston 18 is 75, uh, and Loch Lomond 18 that I've already shared with you is about 75 to 80 pounds as well. So again, Anok 18, fabulous stuff, Mark. Go right ahead and buy yourself that Anok 18. If you open it and the neck pour you don't enjoy, you're, you just live up the road from me, I'll buy the rest off you. That's how confident I am about you enjoying that whiskey. Donald Ranson saying, would you pay 300 Canadian for Anok 24? Seems to me like that's a wee bit pricey, but that's what I'm talking about as we go across the world and things and, you know, people are maybe get a bit cynical, the distribution networks and the, the, the way that the whiskey gets out there is different and the prices get skewed a little bit. Um, is this a 300 Canadian whiskey, which is about 160 pounds? No, I think I would be hard pushed, Not no reflection on the whiskey, but just because I know that the rest of the world is getting it much cheaper than that, Donald. Um, but if you can try it first, you might be able to try it and decide that um, maybe it's going to be worth that for you. What do you think? So there we go. That's my kind of big reveal to you. I think that genuinely, uh, Kilkerran 12, I think, has got an argument. Um, it's been one of the best value whiskies out there just now. Everybody knows all my other favourite whiskies, the ones that I love and evangelise about regularly. But this one I've probably been a wee bit quiet about. I did this, I uh, enjoyed this on a live stream with Whiskey and the Six Rob uh, over a year ago now, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and that's how long I've had this. I think at that time I had just been gifted. This is a Christmas gift from my wife and I'm very grateful for it. Thank you, dear wife. But great, great value whiskey. Ebhead is saying he loves the Anok 24. He bought two. And I guess it's at that kind of price. That you can. Anyway, let's see. I've got a couple of announcements. I think uh, I was going to talk about uh, the London Whiskey Club tasting, but I've missed that. I think that was last night. Um, so the, the London Whiskey Club just seems to seems to be going from strength to strength. Those guys are thriving. They're doing great things. They're getting great tastings organised. They're meeting up regularly. Everybody is super energised about whiskey. Um, if you if you can get anywhere close to a London Whiskey Club meeting, hook up with those guys and go along and hang out and see what it's all about. Um, like I say, it's one of those clubs, and because London is such an international hub, you don't need to live there to join that club. They, you can be a member regardless of where you live. I was really sad because I was down in London this week. And if I could have eked out my stay to join those guys, I thought I might be able to pull it off. And then British Airways went on strike and I was flying with BA. I was flying with British Airways, but my flight wasn't affected. So I had to pack up and come home at the scheduled time. Also, Bimber, I think tonight, Bimber are having their big party. Um, uh, so I, I hope that everybody that's involved in that is having a good time down in London and I wish Bimber the very best of luck as well. What else have I got to do here? I did try to make a little list to try and remember everything. Really hoping that I can meet up with Phil and Deepa. Uh, I think I'm doing okay. Now, is Kilco in tonight? I think he is, but Kilco... Um, uh, one of my patrons uh, asked if I would be okay mentioning the New England Whiskey Festival, and I said yes, absolutely. In fact, I should have did it a bit earlier in the stream when there were more people in, I think. Uh, I apologise, my friend. But at the end of this month, on the 28th of September, in the afternoon the, at Twin River uh, Event Centre, uh, the New England Whiskey Festival is happening, and he was wondering if anybody else is located near there or close by to hook up and uh, to meet. So you'll find Kilco, he's in here uh, tonight. There he is, there he's saying he is around I hear. So yes, there is a, a festival that you could potentially hook up together at the end of the month. I'm happy to talk about any events that's going on where any of you guys want to kind of have meetings ad hoc and hook up together. So if you're going to any festivals or that, of course you're doing it in the chat, you're doing it in the lounge anyway, uh, but you can let me know and I'm happy to shout it out. No problem. Is anyone up for the quiz? I don't have a moderator. It'd be me that's running it on my own tonight. Um, but uh, I have a quiz prepared. Had a really fun time actually with uh, patrons on a patron only stream that I did a week and a half ago. I, I did a, a themed quiz where I did a quiz that was fully on uh, the Glen distillery. So anything that had Glen in the name. 
Um, and it kind of made me think that it's a wee bit harder to put questions together when you have themes, when you tie yourself in like that. But I thought that might be a, a good idea to do theme the quizzes in the, excuse me, in the future. I don't have that tonight. It's a random quiz tonight, the usual quiz. But what do you think of that? I know I'm going to get asked about the t-shirts as well. The t-shirts are, are very much progressing. Not as fast as I'd like, but I hope you appreciate that I'm picky about these things. And I don't just want to just kind of chuck money at something and then be a wee bit let down by it. So I'm trying really hard to make the t-shirts nice. I want, I, I want it to be something that I like to wear. Our bag is saying, dude got to split, have a good weekend, your bar flies. See those uh, going uh, at the Midland Whiskey Night. Thanks for stopping in, Andy. Good to see you again, my friend. Have a good uh, night and weekend. Whiskey and obviously saying hard questions, but it's Springbank 12 night. <laughs> uh, I think there are some easy questions in there tonight, but of course there will be some tricky ones too. Pete Head is saying, I the quiz. Okay, because you insist. Okay, good. So, um... I, I don't. I think Jason Whiskey Wise will be at the uh, Bimber event because I think it's going to be one that goes on into the night. Let's compare these two orangey whiskies. So now from the Loch Lomond, I'm getting a nice, moist kind of tobacco thing. But even although this Anoc 24 has been kind of low in that bottle for a number of months now, this is a bit sharper, a bit brighter, a bit fresher. Maybe even a wee bit more floral, you could say. Lovely stuff. Okay, we're all up for the quiz. Let's see if I can run this quiz on my own this evening. I know that uh, I saw that uh, Whiskey Jason from Germany is in. And uh, Whiskey uh, Jason will be able to help me out and uh, with uh, some definition between uh, the chunks of answers as they all come flying in. Jimmy Jazz is here. Good to see you, Jimmy. How do I find out more Kilco? Fantastic if you're able to hook up. Um, yeah, I should, there should be some way. What I would do, Kilco, what to do is in the comments of this video underneath, um, leave a comment there about the, the festival and uh, I guess that you can work out how to communicate with the other guys through the comment section. Um, if any of you do share uh, email addresses in there, as soon as the other person picks it up, I would recommend that you delete the, the comment with the email address in again. Uh, but it'd be good if the, some of the community managed to hook up at that. That would be a fantastic thing to happen. Okay, let's get the quiz underway. My next live is on the 26th of September, by the way. Two weeks from now. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. I'll try and make it so it's the whole screen. There we go. I'm getting a wee bit better with this software. Okay. Good luck, everybody. As you know, um, uh, this is a multiple choice. Uh, there's an ABC option for everyone. Um, you're only playing against yourself. There are no prizes for this. Um, so just do the best you can. Pass mark is 5, 50%. And it's just for fun. Hopefully the idea is, is that you're intrigued or you can learn wee bits and pieces here and there. Good luck, everybody. I'll try and pull up the chat as I go into question one and ask. The month long, this is an upcoming ultimate whiskey auction, is set to exceed how much for its 394 lots? Uh, so this is an, this is a, an auction where um, there are 394 lots in. And what they're talking about doing is, I think it's a, just a one-off auction. And there is speculation of how much this is going to raise. There is a Macallan 60-year-old in there. There's a bunch of other Macallans. There's Port Ellens and all sorts of really, really rare things. This is just how, how crazy everything is right now. This month-long au auction uh, runs from, I think, the end of September till the end of October. Are they expecting over one and a half million pounds? 
two and a half million pounds or four million pounds? A, 1.5 million, B, 2.5 million, or C, four million pounds? This is something that's happening in the news. How do I get this? I need to, sometimes it doesn't register clicks. Here we go. Everybody seems to think C, four million. Four million pounds for 394 lots of whiskey. I don't know if that means 394 bottles. I think it does. But yes, this is one of these um, absolutely crazy things. From the ultimate whiskey collector, apparently, he's a selling all his stuff. And yes, they're expecting uh, that over the month-long uh, auction time, they will raise in excess of four million. I've got to say that uh, just by how crazy all of this stuff is right now, as I was looking at the things that was in that auction, I fully expect that it's going to go even higher than that. It's just nuts just now. And it's such a shame because you get the impression that all of the whiskies that are in this lot, I mean, there's some amazing things, um, are going to stay sealed. It's basically, they're going to stay ornaments. And I just hope that whoever buys it doesn't end up with a bunch of fakes on his hands. I mean that sincerely. Which distillery is heavily relied upon for the famous Chivas Regal blends? So I'm going to give you three Chivas Regal distilleries here. And I want to know which one is heavily relied upon for their blends. Um, but specifically, I'm talking about the blends branded Chivas Regal. Is it A, Longmorn, B, Aberlour, or C, Strathyla? A, Longmorn, B, Aberlour, or C, Strathyla? Whiskey Jason thinks C, Strathyla. Loads of other people think C. Most Chun thinks A, Longmorn. Uh, see, most people are going with C. Whiskey Bowman Chris thinks C, Graham Young, C. Good to see you, Graham, over there in Canada. Got to hang out with Graham uh, this year as well. So many of you in here have managed to meet now. It's, it's really a privilege. Welsh Toro's in. It's nuts, but I don't give. <laughs> Good to see you, Welsh. Okay, I can tell you that the distillery that's heavily, famously relied upon for the Chivas Regal blends is, of course, the very picturesque Strathyla, one of the original uh, 18th century distilleries. It's famous for its stonework. It's very, very picture postcard. It's twin pagoda uh, ventilators there. Um, yes. So the basis for, Strath for uh, the Chivas Regal blends is said to be Strathyla. I quite enjoy a Strathyla. There's not enough of it around. Gordon McPhail often do uh, decent bottlings of Strathyla. Something to look out for. Question three. Glenfiddich's new, this is one of their brand new releases, this is another story from the news. Glenfiddich's new Grand Cru is a 23-year-old wine finished, £220 bottling, bottled at A, 40% ABV, B, 48% ABV, or C, 58.6% ABV. So you can see where I'm coming from here. A 23-year-old whiskey from Glenfiddich. And I was curious when I heard about this because KB Barton, I managed to hang out with KB recently. Um, him and his wife were over. We met up, we had a few drams together. One of the best drams I had that night was a 26-year-old Glenfiddich. It was so waxy, so delicious, so fantastic. I could have sworn it was Klein Leash. It was lovely. Um, but it was 26-year-old Glenfiddich. But it was bottled by an indie. It was bottled at a decent ABV and it was enjoyable. So, of course, the point of this question is um, you can tell by the presentation of this whiskey who it's intended for because their Grand Cru, which is finished in uh, champagne uh, wine casks, is bottled at 40% ABV. Kind of wrenches at me a little bit here because I bet you it's a lovely whiskey. I bet you it's gorgeous. But I bet you it could have been better. <laughs> I'm just getting too cynical, right? But you can see who it's aimed at, you know. £220 isn't ridiculous, a 23-year-old product. 
but can you imagine what's been stripped away from that for us? Question four. Which island distillery is the third best seller in the UK after Glenfiddich and Glenmorangie? This is quite an interesting one. And I know it's a UK focused question, but you kind of get an idea. I think they do, a, uh, you know, this, this whiskey is reasonably well distributed everywhere, but they're now the third biggest seller in the UK. So Glenfiddich is the best, Glenmorangie is second, or they kind of trade places, sometimes it's the other way around, but who's third? Is it A, Highland Park? Is it B, Jura? Or C, Laphroaig? The third best seller in the UK, an island distillery, is it A, Highland Park, B, Jura? Or C, Laphroaig? Well, Storo thinks Laphroaig, Spirit Works Tom thinks Jura, Skogsberg. Uh, it says three out of three so far. Good for you. Keep it going. John Paul Vanderhoven says Highland Park, as does Lee Woodrow. Mashburn is St. Talisker. <laughs> Not an option, unfortunately, Ross, but it's fantastic to have you in, my friend. Uh, lots of people thinking B for Jura. Um, Pegglestrand thinks A for Highland Park. Jimmy Jazz also. also. Bogdan Avram is in. Good to see you. Also, they think A. Now, let me share with you. The third best-selling whiskey in the UK after Glenfiddich and Glenmorangie is Jura. Jura, believe it or not. Now, uh, there's a famous story about Jura that um, some years ago, because I think the quality was, let's say, let's be diplomatic and say inconsistent, that they re-racked the, the vast majority of their stock. They re-racked uh, into fresh casks uh, almost everything that they had. Um, and then as time went on, and just recently, I think earlier this year, last year, they uh, re-released loads and loads of new expressions, with the idea being that it was going to be much, much better. Um, I'm still struggling to find a Jura that really grabs me. Um, Jura seem to not know where they want to be, because the language that they use is to kind of up the quality and, and bring out something that's going to speak more to us. Um, but then they seem to chase the price point uh, market. That's how it seems to me. I, I would like somebody to enlighten me otherwise. However, they're doing decent from it, aren't they? Because they are the third biggest uh, in the UK. Um, there's none of it in my cabinet. Let's have a look at a picture of a distillery now as we go into question five and see if you can tell me what we're looking at here. Which distillery are we looking at? I'll leave it up there for a little while. Whiskey Weekend Drama is saying Aqua Vita Jura. Okay, bedtime. We'll finish the quiz tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Whiskey Weekend Drama, thanks for dropping in. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Jesse Voice is saying, good to see you, Jesse. Saying one out of next six, and I passed this week's. Good scoring already. Superb. Tom Good is on two out of four. Uh, he's only on 50% 50 so, so far. Tom Good is in here tonight. It's actually Tom who is responsible for the little musical intro ditty that you hear in the intro and outro to these live streams now. So thank you very much for that, Tom. Quite enjoy it. So we'll give you the options of what we're looking at here. We're either looking at A, Dallas Do, B, Ben Romack, or C, Royal Brackla. A, Dallas Do, B, Ben Romack, or C, Royal Brackla, and I'll leave it up. So all these distilleries are very, very close to each other. Right up in the north of Speyside. Razvan is saying looks like a big one. Well, I have to say I agree, but I think it's just the way the photo is taken and the way that it's um, framing all the buildings. I don't think... Um, It's not particularly big in scale. Got some people talking about Jura now. Lots of people saying C. I think we have got a banana skin here. Let me share with you the distillery that you're looking at right now. This is actually a working museum. This is Dallas Do, a distillery that was closed in 1983, but it's still open, it still does tours as a museum. I often fancy that it would be one of the easiest distilleries to revitalize again, right? Um, but there you go, that is Dallas Do. 
I've not visited. Um, I've been told that I should go up and visit. Was that a banana skin for some of you? That's the halfway point. Question five's done. Scoggs Martin saying, ouch, four out of five. <laughs> Justin Martin saying, damn. Hoyt Hempel saying, tricky. Uh, James McGoran saying, never heard of it. Guess that's why. Um, it was a famous distillery of its time. Um, but yeah, of course, it's been closed since 1983, just as a distillery. Very little product out there that you can get your hands on easily. You have to go to auction, I guess. So we've been asking there for some of you at the halfway point. Let's go into question six. Glen Dew is a 13 year old peated malt from which distillery? Glen Dew. It's a Gaelic name, um, which I think would mean Black Valley, Dark Valley, Hidden Valley, perhaps. Uh, is it? A, Teeling in Ireland, B, Glenora in Canada, or C, Glananmore in France. Where is Glen Dew, a 13-year-old peated malt? Is it Irish, Canadian, or French? Teeling, Glenora, or Glananmore? Am I being sneaky? <laughs> Graham Young is saying he's only ever seen Dallas do from the road. Mike Meyer is saying B. Uh, service of laugh. It's good to see Andreas. He's in. He's saying C. Donald Rance B. Scogsmart C. Most Chun B. Pegelstrand C. Kind of all over the place on this one. Let's see if there's a consensus anywhere. James McGoran saying total guess B. <laughs> Superb. Let me share it with you. Glen Dew is a 13-year-old peated whiskey from Glenora in Canada. It's a Canadian whiskey. I think I've got a picture of the label here to let you see it. Glen Dew. Uh, oh, it actually has a translation here. It actually says the Dark Glen peated single malt whiskey, 13 year old, years old. So, yes, it's a Canadian whiskey. <laughs> I'm going to show that comment, Ed, 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 it's been held because of your language. It's fine, I'm not offended. Um, <laughs> there's a few people <laughs> slipped up on that. Paul Gibbs as well. Sorry, I think I was a wee bit sneaky there, but there you go. It's a, Can a Canadian whiskey, 13-year-old peated malt from Nova Scotia in Canada. Question seven. In recent years, SCAPA, in Orkney increased its capacity by, it's quite an interesting thing here. I think it's a cool question, but you, I might take some heat for it. Um, SCAPA increased their capacity by doing what? A, they added a third still. B, by reducing the fermentation times, or C, by switching to a louder mash tun. So I think the distinction I'm making there with C is a louter tun, it's closed, covered, as opposed to an open mash tun. Um, on the distillation side, maybe they added a third still akin to uh, Glen Goyne, three stills, um, or they reduced the fermentation. One of the typical bottlenecks, bot bottlenecks sorry, in distilling can often be the fermentation room. Um, so what do they do? They add more washbacks or they reduce the fermentation time? What did they do? Did they add a third still? Did they reduce fermentation times or did they switch their mash tun? Yes, I'm being a bit tricky tonight. But I'll just, I'll put you out your misery on this one and tell you that in SCAPA in recent times, owned by Pernod Ricard, Chevis Regal, they actually managed to increase their capacity by reducing the fermentation times. Now, what's remarkable about it is that um, they reduced it from 160 hour fermentation to 52, which is huge, absolutely huge. Now, I don't, you know, the, the whiskey making decisions are taken by the whiskey makers, um, uh, you know, 
I don't know anything about making whiskey, but, but to me, that's got to have a huge effect on the product. And I'll tell you anecdotally that the Scapa 16, despite something that was presented at 40%, Scapa 16 was a wonderful bottle of whiskey. It wasn't too expensive when it was out originally, and I loved the stuff. Loved it. Scapa 14 that was before that, I also enjoyed very much as well. But the recent things from Scapa, I don't enjoy so much. And it does make you wonder, is it something as fundamental as this that's changed it? Or is it just the fact that it's kind of more uh, rough and ready, non-age statement stuff that's coming out and the 60-year-old uh, well-aged stuff was much better? I thought it was interesting. Interesting thing to throw in there. Okay, let's go into question eight. Then ask, which distillery has just released a new 16-year-old exclusively through Amazon? I did mention this one earlier. This is a distillery that's that's doing this specific release through Amazon right across Europe, not just in the UK, right across Europe. And furthermore, um, and I don't know how they're doing this, but they've got some kind of distribution agreement that's going to be made available throughout North America as well. Which distillery is doing an exclusive through Amazon? Is it A, Aberlour, B, Lefroig, or C, Jura? Aberlour, 16-year-old, B, Lefroig, 16-year-old, or C, Jura, 16-year-old. It's better worse, Tommy's saying, I've got a bottle of the Scapa 16 here that I recently picked up at a bottle shop for 60 quid. Good for you, white label with a little kind of blue illustration on it. It's really nice, classy stuff. It's soft, it's 40%, but I think you'll enjoy it, Tom, I really do. And uh, loads of people have got this one. I think this is quite an obvious and easy one. I did touch on it earlier in the stream, but although I didn't let the cat out of the bag, maybe some of you did. But I've ordered this from Amazon, and I can tell you that this 16-year-old is going to be a Lefroig. And they're putting out there at £89 for a 40 percent now there's other 48 percent alafroigs out there of course quarter cask and various other ones but this is a 16 year old lafroig i can't remember um maybe lafroig 15s and lafroig 18s but those are few and far between and they're kind of they're just a memory now um and if you do get them now they're kind of batch there's, there's not many of them this is interesting that they're bringing out a 48 percent um it's a little bit pricey 89 pounds could have could have been better at 69 maybe even a bit less 48 percent is great though because it doesn't even compare then with a lagavulin 16 because lagavulin 16 at 43 um around about 60 pounds of course um so i was curious enough to buy one of these um i bought it in pre-order I, I, I don't know when it's going to get delivered i'll get some time in the future and it'll come off the credit card and i'll realize how much trouble i'm in at home anyway the freud 16 is your answer if you said b give yourself a point Moving on to question nine. Which of these distilleries does not release a Solera Vat edition? So just quickly, Solera Vat is like a, a rack system from a winemaking practices where they uh, only ever empty half at any one point in time. So if they take half out to bottle it, um, the next layer, half of it tops up that and the next layer tops up that and so on and so forth until it gets to the point that the new make fills up the top. Um, and the idea is, is that it kind of dilutes over time, um, but it builds and it builds and it builds in flavour and it builds in complexity. That's the concept behind it. But I want to know which distillery have I got here that does not have that system in practice. So which of these does not release a Soleravat edition? A, Glenlivet, B, Glenfiddich, or C, Glen Grant. I'm speaking about that's available to buy now. Danny said, been working on a bottle of the Triplewood. I have to say, bit of a guilty pleasure for me, the Triplewood. I quite enjoyed it. I really quite liked it. Oh, whiskey, Jason is saying Solera, question mark. Okay, I'm just catching up now. So lots of you think Glenlivet. 
that doesn't have it. Chris Banks Wildlife thinks C, Glenn Grant. A few of the others said Martin, Hoyt Hempel, Donald Rance, Whiskey Radar, uh, Richard Hall, uh, Luca Amitrano, La, Luca. Good to have you in, Luca. That looks like a new name. Michael Johnson, uh, Lee Woodrow and Spirit Works, Tom, all say C, although Tom admits that he's guessing. I'll tell you just now that the one of these distilleries that doesn't release a Solera expression is Glenn Grant. Um, Glenn Fittick is famous for their 15 year old uh, Solera expression. They've had it out for uh, quite a few years. Actually, not a bad whiskey, quite good. Um, and uh, Glenn Livett do their, I think it's Master Distillers Reserve, has a standard edition and a Solera edition. Um, so, Glenn Grant, if you'd answered C, um, give yourself a point. And let's see where we're, where we're at after nine. Is there anybody still sitting on a full house? I'm going to just expand this chat up as big as I can. See if I can catch it. Steve Asin got this wrong, one wrong. He's on seven so far. Whiskey Jason on eight. Great score, Jason. Multi Agus Muncher, seven. Steve A, six. Justin Martin crushing it on four out of nine. <laughs> you still got a chance of a pass, Mark, uh, Justin. Per Christensen is six. Whiskey Radar, six. Tom Good, four. Pass fail time. Yep, absolutely. Tom Gregor is saying three. Uh, where, where are we? Where are we? James, six out of nine. Good score, James. Seven out of nine for Whiskey Novice Sweet. He's already celebrating. Uh, is Sevi in? Is Sevi here? Uh, six out of nine for Aaron Spirit Works, Tom, seven. Jesse Voison seven. Whiskey Bowman, Chris, seven. Steve A, six. Bogdan already on a five. Gabriel, five. Gabriel Wilding, good to have you in, Gabriel. It looks like another new name, perhaps. I think it is. Hey, Matt, 69, eight. Looking for anybody that can beat eight. Donald Rance also on eight. So it doesn't look like anybody's on nine. Paul Gibbs on four out of nine. He's raging. Tim O'Leary, good to have you in, Tim. Two out of nine. <laughs> At least you're being honest, Tim. Don't worry. I think that there was quite a few tricky ones in here tonight, actually. Alchemist is in. Sevi, congratulations on your tennis uh, win as well for, his, for part of his work. He works for quite a large civil organisation, and he's the UK champion for them in tennis. He shared it with that. Uh, with us late, earlier today. Congratulations, buddy. I hope you're having a dram to celebrate. Welsh Toro has given himself 10 out of 10. <laughs> Good for you, Welsh. Skog Smart, 7 out of 9. Okay, it looks like, as James McGoran is saying, 8 is the top. Let's go into the very last question. Um, I think it's a bit of an easy one. I don't know, and they may be a bit sneaky. These are quite random sometimes. Atom, part of the Master Malt Group, are associated uh, with which of these brands? So who is Atom associated with? A, that boutique whiskey company. B, the whiskey agency. Or C, North Star Spirits. Where is the connection? Atom, part of Master Malt, distributed, I think, by Maverick. A, that boutique whiskey company, B, the whiskey agency, or C, North Star Spirits. Uh, everybody is drawn immediately to A, which is that boutique whiskey company. Richard Hall is saying, can I play my joker? You're absolutely welcome to, Richard. You're only playing against yourself, my friend. It's your rules. Um, everybody, everybody is saying A for that boutique whiskey company. <laughs> so you can follow the crowd if you want. Or follow Danny, who's saying D. <laughs> and uh, yes, of course, it is indeed that boutique whiskey company. Who are very good at finding some really fantastic and curious things from time to time. Always wanted to ask why the 50 seal bottles. Okay. Who managed to get nine out of 10? Let's see. Whiskey, Jason, 9 out of 10. You star, Jason, fantastic. Thanks for helping me running it as well. Wonderful score. I think it's going to be tough for anybody to... Well, there was a few eights, so you might get matched tonight. Uh, the Alchemist is saying, thanks, Akavavidi. Very proud and glad I finally made it. It's good to have you in, Sevi. Good to have you in at the end as well. Um, Justin Martin, 4. <laughs> Aaron Blum, that looks like a new name, saying 7 out of 10, not awful. That's an excellent score. Sid Martin on an 8. 
Jason Whiskey Wise, hundred percent. Jason's in. Probably he's been at the Bimber party. He's been hanging out and having a nice time. Good to have you in, Jason. Uh, let's see. Donald Rand's got a nine out of ten. Well done, Donald. Juan Quintanillo on a six. Good to have you, Juan, and a good pass mark as well. Whiskey Bowman, best score yet, eight out of ten. Superb. And Tom, eight for ten. Pretty happy with that. Great score. Fantastic stuff. Just scanning down quickly. Scanning. Let's see any more eight Molly Haggis Munch and Matthew on eight out of ten. Chris Banks well done for eight out of ten. Jesse Voice and well done eight out of ten. Eight out of ten for Graham Young as well. Lots of eight out of ten. It's not a bad quiz tonight, um, but I'm not surprised there isn't a ten out of ten. I think you'll all agree that potentially, uh, well, you could see there were a few wee banana skins. So there we have it. We're well under the two hours tonight. Did I move too fast? I've been rabbiting on um, just a bit quicker than normal. I have to say it's good. It's, it's nice for me uh, when it's less than two hours and it seems to take YouTube uh, less time uh, to put the, the replay out there for everyone with the chat matched up as well. If it's less than two hours, it seems to be able to manage that. Whereas if it goes over the two hour mark, it can be a long time. Pair has just uh, given me a little dancing emoji and sent over another generous uh, dram as well. I'm going to raise this Loch Lomond 18 pair, and I'm going to say thank you very much, my friend. Wonderful to have you in again. Thank you for the dram. James is saying, has it been that long already? I missed the first 30 minutes getting home from work. So longer is better. Danny is saying, thanks for the VPUB. You're very welcome, Dan, thanks to you and to everyone for joining once more. Like I say, the next VPUB is going to be two weeks from now, so it'll be the 26th, uh, Thursday the 26th. Um, I'll try and come up with a theme and, and let people know what the theme's going to be a wee bit earlier this time. Um, things are starting to settle down a bit better at work, I'm getting a wee bit more time, hopefully more time to prepare a bit more for you guys, a bit more for patrons as well. Um, Sid Martin is saying, this was a really good stream. Thanks, Sid. It's great to have you here always, Chris. Uh, Whiskey Bowman is saying cheers for the stream, Roy. Good to see everyone again. And it's good to have you back with us again, Chris, as well. Um, Gregor is saying 105 thumbs up. Good. Thank you so much. means a lot. The thumbs up really do mean a lot. It helps me with YouTube too. Um, and it's just a nice way to kind of measure uh, the enjoyment, I suppose. Um, Whiskey Novice is saying enjoyed that, mate. Cheers. Thank you very much for joining. Alistair Gray said thanks for the drums, Roy. Uh, you are welcome. Welcome, everybody. Bill Doll has just appeared. I give you the cheers, my friend. So I joined very late. We'll have to watch in the replay. Bill is in California, so he's eight hours behind us. So he's joining uh, just before four in the afternoon, I guess. Gregor saying good night, everyone. Thanks, Roy. Again, thank you, Gregor. And thanks, Whiskey Jason, for your help running the quiz tonight. It's always great to have you in, Jason. You join. You must be one of the most regular guys as well. I really do appreciate it, my friend. I do. Uh, Matthew is saying big thanks, Roy. Take care, all. Uh, Emery McGill, good to have you, Emery. Is saying missed the quiz, had to step away. We'll try on the replay. It should be there for you. Hopefully, YouTube will catch up quite quickly. Tom is saying jumped in late, but cheers, Roy. Listen, thanks everyone for joining. I love these nights. I love that I've found this fantastic community. It's wonderful for me to have a platform to hang out with you. And I'm very, very glad that some of you guys, most of you guys, <laughs> seem to enjoy it too. I hope to bring some news in a couple of weeks' time about the T-shirts, of course, but also some things that are happening throughout October and into November, eh, the Glasgow uh, Whiskey Festival. I just want to mention quickly as well that tomorrow, a Good Spirits Company in Glasgow in the afternoon, Ralph is releasing a Ben Nevis to celebrate his 10 years. It's a bottling by the Good Spirits Company uh, in collaboration with Ralphie. Uh, ben Nevis cask strength, I think it's quite young, I think it's four years old. Um, but that's releasing tomorrow afternoon. I think you have to be there in Glasgow to get your hands on it, or maybe, I think, maybe online too. Um, you might be able to do it online, but that's tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Ralphie is at the Good Spirits Company in Glasgow. I would very much like to try and find some sky time in the afternoon to go along and uh, uh, hang out there and maybe pick up a wee bottle of uh, Ben Nevis as well. Um, if I've forgotten anything, I'll pick it up in the comments below or in the next stream. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to all of you for joining me once more. It's wonderful to have you here always. 
I'll raise this uh, last little sip of Anok 24, as I say, what I believe to be the best value in Scotch whiskey right now. Um, and I'll say thank you, Barflies. Fantastic to hang out with you again. And I'll see you in two weeks' time. Slanchava.